Frank Hannon. And this is Jeff Keith. And we're from Tesla, and you're watching The Rock Office. Hey, we're not there. You've reached the rock office. Time to clock in and rock out. I'm your host, Bill Smith. And I'm Kevin Davis. We are very excited to bring you this episode. This is, I think I can speak for Kevin, probably one of our favorite yeah. to date. We have had the uh, awesome privilege to go backstage at the Cleveland House of Blues and speak with Tesla the last time they were in town. And uh, they're just a bunch of great guys. We're very honored that they took the time to speak with us and uh, Kevin, what do you what do you want to share about that? Well, you know they've got a new uh, single that just uh, just came out. It's called "Taste My Pain." You know Tesla, they are uh, they are probably one of our favorite bands of all times, and a lot of yours probably as well. Um, and it's really exciting to see them coming out with some new material. I think I speak for all of the Tesla fans when we say that it's really exciting to see that happen. We've got a little preview for you of that within our episode here today, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, real fun. We also want to let you know um, that you know you can check out all of our episodes at our new website, which is at therockoffice.com. So check that out. It's a brand new website. We put it up um, so you know we, we can uh, better communicate what's going on to you guys, and uh, you know we're real excited to bring that to you. So, Bill. Well, uh, once again, I think we're going to sign off here, but we want to thank Tesla for taking their time out of their schedule to be with us. What a, what a privilege. What a great bunch of guys. I want to thank their manager, Dean, also for uh, working out the details yeah. be behind the scene with us. Thank you so much, Dean. You are a pleasure. Absolute True pleasure to work absolutely. with you. Yes. Uh, remember, like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash rockoffice. We're also on Twitter at the underscore rock underscore office. Once again, rockoffice.com. Make sure you check that out. And without any further ado, here's Tesla. All right, here we are backstage, Cleveland House of Blues, with the legendary oh. <laughs> Tesla. Yeah. Ge legendary. Legendary, yes. Gentlemen, by no means do you need introductions, but could you please introduce yourselves for our viewers? My name is Frank, and I play guitar. <laughs> and my name is Jeff Keat, and I'm a singer for Tesla. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Very first, good. we want to just thank you guys for being on the show. We are not only uh, we do this podcast but we are truly fans and have been for long a, time long fans. time fans so this is really a dream come true so we want to thank you guys sincerely for being on the show with us today. right on guys thank you and uh, you're in the midst of your new uh, tour how's that going and uh how how the the road been treating you so far well it's the summer months you know so uh we are we're always super busy in the summer Right. Um, we've done a couple shows with motley crew nice that really kicked ass and, nice uh, what else did we do this year Oh, man, we're doing it all, man. Uh, <laughs> we were, we started off the year on a cruise ship, the Monsters of Rock cruise. Awesome. That. And uh, that was killer. Then we went to Europe for a couple shows. We went to Europe. We actually flew in on Thursday, did a show on Friday and Saturday, and came home on Sunday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was an express trip. So you guys don't stop. I mean, you weren't joking. You're always hitting it. Yeah, it was the Europe Express. Wow. So we are here in Cleveland, and I was wondering if you could share any fond memories or any funny stories you have about uh, Cleveland here, if you are able to, anything not too illicit. Dude, the <laughs> hailstorm earlier was something else, man. <laughs> yeah. It woke me up on the bus. It was like... <laughs> yeah, we've got some pretty wild weather around here recently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dean, your manager, said that to us earlier. I said, well, you're in Cleveland. If you don't like the weather, wait an hour, and it'll change. Yeah. So. Jeez. Well, speaking of hailstorms, Cleveland, from what I remember, on all the tours that we did, you know, when we were with Alice Cooper or opening for David Lee Roth or Def Leppard back in the day, Cleveland was always the show that was in between Dayton and Akron and Cincinnati. 
And it was like in the middle of like a party week. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't remember <laughs> Cleveland too much, to be honest with you. Okay. Because it was always in the midst of a hailstorm, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. A different kind of hailstorm. Right, right. A hailstorm. A hailstorm. Yeah, started in right. Dayton. Right. Dayton. See, we had friends all over Ohio. Okay. Right. And we still do. We had the Dayton gang used to follow us around. Okay. You know, we have some diehard loyal fans that will like drive and sometimes fly thousands of miles to follow us. I, I seen some of their comments this morning on Facebook. Yeah. And we uh, we were impressed. There's people coming from Pittsburgh. I think one from Philadelphia. So. There's so yeah, there's some people from Jersey that are here. They awesome. were here at the sound check today. Uh, the That's young awesome. kid Anthony and his dad. And okay. Okay. Uh, when we were with Motley Crue yesterday in Michigan, uh, we had some friends from Jersey there too. But uh, we used to have a lot of friends that would come and follow us from Ohio. Okay. And uh, well, especially Cleveland Dayton. Cleveland, Cleveland does rock. Does rock. So, um, speaking of rock, the new single "Taste My Pain." Yes, sir. Let us let us give us a scoop. Tell us about it. We're excited to hear it. So, it's heavy metal, man. No, it's now, one of our more grinding riffs that we've okay. written in a long time. So it's rock and roll, definitely. So people, because yeah. like, people say that's you know, that's gone. Rock is dead. Yeah, no, I don't believe man. that. Rock no, is man, alive and well, still alive and well. Yeah, it's still alive and well, man. And uh, that song just we just wrote it. What about six weeks ago or so? Yeah, it started off uh, with a couple guitar riffs that I had, and uh, I actually kind of forgot about them because I had a couple <laughs> other riffs. Okay. And JK was like, hey, what happened to that one riff you had? -na 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 this really grinding, heavy riff that okay. kind of sounds a little bit like Alice Cooper. -na 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 yeah. Frank's nice. like, oh, I forgot about that. Next, you know. Yeah. Wow. So after he mentioned that riff to me, then I, when we were up in Lincoln City, Oregon at Soundcheck, I was noodling with this other riff that was influenced by Alice in Chains. Okay. Because uh, they're one of our favorite bands, too, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I had this kind of Jerry Cantrell kind of riff mixed with some Alice Cooper, mixed with some Black Sabbath. And then JK came over and he was sing we were singing some melodies. He was scatting. Oh, okay. And he was, you know, like like how Steven Tyler does sometimes. He's like scats, you know, right. just yeah. to come yeah. up with some just ideas. Right. And I said, what did you just say? It sounded like you just said, taste my pain. It's just, can you just spit it out? <laughs> I was like, that's cool words, man. Taste my pain. So then we ran, he ran with it, took it home awesome. and wrote a whole song about it. I got a question for you. Does anybody here want to hear a brand new Tesla song? This is new blood for you. This is called. Yeah. <laughs> 
then it's safe to assume that a new album will be following soon. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Any details on that you can share with us? Um, not really. Not yet. I mean, <laughs> we're teetering on the idea of, of trying to maybe keep it on the heavier side. Okay. Because, you know, our last record was Twisted Wires and the Acoustic Sessions, mm -hmm. okay. which right. was more of the lighter versions of what we do. We're talking about that, but, you know, Tesla always has a ballad and, and different mid-tempo kind of things, too. So, yeah. It's so brand new. I mean, we're just getting fired up. One of the last interviews I heard from you guys, you were talking about a box set. It was actually on that metal show, I think. What's the pr the progress of that, or is there? Well, what happened was is we started our own label. Okay. And we've pretty much at this point in our career taken charge of our own stuff independent. We're very much an indie band now, so to speak. We do all our own artwork, our own stuff. And... Apparently, the stuff that we wanted to put on the box set, like the old original four-track demos that okay. we did in the garage, okay. apparently the other record company that we were signed to owns those. Oh. So they weren't going to let us take it and put it on our own indie label. Okay. They wanted to have exclusive control of it, and so okay. we kind of like were two rams butting heads and kind of locking horns on it and haven't reached an agreement yet. It, unfortunately, it, it, the people that lose out are like the fans, you know, because we just want to hear this stuff, and that's too Honestly, bad. Honestly, you know? the stuff that we had was like old, raunchy four-track tapes. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> you know, it's all good, man. It's yeah, like, that was good stuff, though. Yeah, yeah. sometimes that's the best stuff. Yeah, like, the fans the would have loved that's it. That's the roots. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because that's yeah. where you guys, exactly. like you said, in the garage, you know, that's where you're laying down some right. of the early yeah. influences of Tesla. You know, yeah, yeah I feel that. Yeah. One of the things I want to ask, you guys have been doing this for many, many years now. And like I said, we've been lifelong fans ever since we were, you know, with my Walkman, you know, the cassette. And you've had so many hits. I mean, Little Susie, you know, No Way Out, Love Song, Signs. How does a band in the position that you're in keep it fresh, keep it exciting, still want to keep going out there and making new songs, seeing people, keep going on tour? What's it? that you guys keep driving you to do that passion yeah man we just got a passion for music and and all that we've done and all that we're you know about to do it kind of comes in waves you know i mean sometimes we're we're not as excited about it but right now we're super excited about it you know and it's uh we had a, a local show in our hometown pop up this year and i said I asked JK, I said, hey, if we do this show, let's put together a new song. And as soon as we did and we heard the new song, it came to life. It fired that passion up that he's yeah. talking about. Okay. And the juices are flowing. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. And, and along those same lines, back when you kind of went on a hiatus and kind of, you know, had taken some time off and kind of done all the different independent, you know, uh, things – um, do you feel like that maybe gave you a, a little bit more drive to come back together and, and kind of finish this thing up the way that you have here recently? Well, we flat out broke up for four years. <laughs> In the 90s, yeah. yeah. People yeah. call it a hiatus, but we broke up. That's a politically right. correct term. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's cool. <laughs> well, yeah, we should have took a hiatus, but instead we got all mad and broke up. Okay. You know, yeah. We had a lot of personal problems that we never dealt with at that time. That was right shit over 20 years ago yeah. but i think you're talking about the side projects and the solo projects and all that kind of stuff right like well no i'm talking really like you said you know when, when you guys broke up four years yeah the, when we broke up in the 90s together, yeah. yeah we came back together and uh you know we got dave root in the band which mm -hmm. really put a nice shot in the arm and that was a really interesting uh you know what i had heard and the way that you came about getting dave in the band that was a very interesting uh uh method if you will of of kind of going out and you know seeking out that the guitar player that you really thought fit your needs yeah yeah we had a couple different guys you know in mind but when uh i found dave on myspace mm -hmm. and uh he came out and uh, jammed with me and uh, i knew instantly that he was going to be perfect i was really excited about that because it's hard to find the just the right yeah. person you know and right. he definitely is just the right guy for the spot Good job, Frank. <laughs> right on. <laughs> At this point in your career, you have had the big hits, the platinum albums, you know, world tour. Arenas. What what else is there on your to do list or your bucket, your rock and roll bucket list, if you will? 
uh, you know what? We don't really carry a bucket list around, but we just enjoy <laughs> playing music, man, and just, you know, uh, anything on your bucket list there, Frank? Skydiving, anything like that? No. Maybe skydiving. <laughs> but that's not musically. No. Who knows? Maybe we can write a song in the air. I could dig getting on like a big festival, you know, and seeing like the big like Day on the Green Monsters of Rock festivals make okay. kind of a comeback. You oh, know, that, that would, would be, be cool. cool. It's like a Rock Lahoma, but like maybe traveling. Yeah, like okay. it used to be like when Aerosmith and Van Halen and Ted Nugent and yeah. all those bands used to do shows in okay. the stadiums. Yeah. If we could do something like that where it would be like Tesla and, and Godsmack and mm -hmm. Aerosmith and Ellis and Chains oh, and dude. all Day that kind of thing. You know, like three. That there kind of go. stuff. You know, if yeah. that if that would come back, I would like to do something like that. Well, I, the big four are, you know, trying, I think, to do, you know, the Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer. They're a lot, we don't really know what's going on with Slayer now, but for a while there, they were trying to do something like that, get that going again. And I know yeah. they even had that Orion Festival. Yeah, and I know they do the outdoor amphitheaters, you know, like the DTEs and yeah. the sheds and stuff like that. But I'm talking about like how it was when the stadiums, man, like the Cotton Bowl and the Oakland Coliseum and, you know, yeah. the Meadowlands, you know, those big, yeah. huge stadium festivals. Yeah. I don't know why. It seems like there's a lot of that stuff overseas, but not so much here. I'm not sure why. Right. And I think there's a fan base for that. There's a lot of metal festivals overseas. Yeah. and. uh in America, it's kind of sleeping right now, you know? Yeah. Well, everything ebbs and flows, I think, you know? It does. One question that we always ask our guests, and uh, it's just a personal thing of ours. We, we're audiophiles. We love the physical form of music, and we kind of feel like, to some extent, the digital world is kind of hurt music, as it were. We always like to ask our guests, what are your feelings on physical music versus digital music, and how do you feel about either pros and cons what are you what's your preference and what do you think well we physically make music i guess it goes down on digital now but right. i mean well i mean it's it's so convenient now yeah and you know it's so before we were talking about this i was telling my son that that we used to go to tower records and search for the new record and because someone had told us about it you know now you can just instantly look at your phone and instantly have it right. in an right. instant you know so it's so easy and convenient the flip side of that is is that i can send you a new song instantly and conveniently you'll have it so it makes it easier for us to work on new music but it has taken some of the excitement away from getting a new piece of product you know yeah. like I remember seeing the new Van Halen record when it first came out and looking at it and going, wow, man, look at those guys, you know? Yeah. And you're wearing the headphones, you're checking it out, looking at all the pictures. Yeah, and, yeah. And, right. you know. It was a lot more hard to get before, you know? Yeah. And now that it's so convenient, it's kind of diluted the excitement of music a little bit. Yeah. It seems like. I agree. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. That's, that's awesome. What can people expect from you guys in the next six months to a year from now i know you mentioned a new album you, i know you're still working on it but what what can the fans look forward to we're gonna keep releasing singles we're gonna okay. put taste my pain out okay uh, we just got the date august 13th okay uh if we get a buzz on that then maybe we can squeeze out a video for it nice. maybe it'll be something just live you know live okay. footage probably us rocking um, and then if that does well, then we'll release another one. Okay. And we're going to put out probably two or three singles while we're making the record. Okay. Nice. And then when the record's done, we'll put it all out at once. Yeah. That's an awesome approach. That's, that's really interesting. It seems like and that's one of the bonuses of this digital age that we were just talking yeah. about. Yeah. So it has its downfalls, but also has its, it's positive managers, things yeah. too. So. Cause it makes it because of that convenience, it makes it easier for bands like us to go ahead and put out a single. Yeah. Well, and you certainly have a fan base that would warrant that. So it's not like five people are going to hear it. I mean, you, you know. We have I, some loyal fans. We're, yeah. per, we're very lucky. Speaking of your fans, where can they go to, you know, to commute with you and talk with you guys? You know, you have, what's the website or the Facebook, Twitter, all that? TeslaTheBand.com. Okay. And it, from there, they can follow and, you. And there's and, Facebook links and Twitters and all that stuff on there. Okay. Okay. Very good. And there's also Facebook slash Tesla the band. Okay. okay very good and people you respond to you keep in touch with any of your fans yeah and... we're always uh trolling on there okay all right very good and and you're know, looking at it yeah. awesome 
Well, listen, guys, I, that's all the questions that we have. We want to yeah. thank you for taking your time out of your schedule to, be, to talk with us. And um, once again, backstage, Cleveland House of Blues, Tesla, 